ಕುಂಡಲಿಣಂ This is being transmitted by our ancestors. They have invoked this gathering so we can deepen our consciousness for world peace. We the youth emerge from the earth maintaining the light with our elders. We advance to dispel darkness from the heart. We are life, the ancient. Oh Hemos venido manteniendo nuestras tradiciones y costumbres. Culture is life. Vienen a contaminar nuestros ríos, acaban el bosque. Somos defensores de la selva para cuidar nuestra naturaleza. Empuja ella de atrás y sus mayores han puesto que está diciendo. ¿Dónde quedó? ¿Qué dice ahí? Vivo de dos formas de mundo, la tradicional y la occidental mestiza. Expression is our weapon. Strike the body with your words. Wound the soul with your art. Deadly is your dance and will conquer with the heart. Rise up now, the roots awaken. This is Kayla Moon here and I'm here with two wonderful amazing people and if you could just introduce yourselves to our viewers and explain a little bit about what you do and your backgrounds. Yeah, sure. So my name is Kumiko Hayashi and I'm a filmmaker, community builder, activist, uh, educator, peace builder. And my name is Jose Akpu Manik Muñoz and I am a messenger for the short team Mayan tribes, mainly uh, sharing the calendars of the new sun, which started in uh, 2012. And Jose, I, I want to start with you. Um, what drew you to Fresno specifically? Because we're here located in Fresno, California. So I'm wondering what drew your spirit to our community here? Originally, it was uh, random just like anything else we do is uh, spirit guided i can say that i was driving by and i needed gas but actually because of that i got in contact with many wonderful people in our community and now we have uh, established a solid uh, relationship between fresno's uh, circles of community and other circles from around the country and the world mm. beautiful beautiful And Kamiko, how did you meet Jose? How did you guys make that connection? Because you've been partnering up with the film release, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's been about almost a year now. And you know, we met at this transformational festival in California called Lucidity Festival. It happens once a year and so, you know, this is a festival that's, you know, alcohol drug free. It's all about consciousness, elevating our vibration, you know, good music, good food, sustainability. And so, you know, I was called to go to this gathering and he was teaching a workshop on the Six Sun calendar. Mm -hmm. And so also doing cacao ceremony. So, you know, I, I um, was just drawn to this uh, workshop that he was doing. And he, <clears throat> you know, he asked if uh, someone would raise their hand to do a reading. So I raised my hand and uh, at that moment he knew and I knew that we would be collaborating together based on 
um, you know, these mathematical systems and these calendars. And so from there on, yeah, we were able to collaborate on a lot of the similar work, similar mission that we have. Absolutely. I feel like there's a lot of different similarities just in seeing your film and then also being present for some of Jose's fire ceremonies. It's just a very similar message. It comes from the same roots, you know. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to Kamiko's film, and it's actually called, the title of it is The Roots Awaken. And I think that's, that's a really beautiful um, term, you know, because it really encompasses the film. And um, just to share with you all, um, throughout the film, there's no narration, which I felt personally was just really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And like you said in the introduction, you know, let your imaginations kind of fill in those gaps. And so often we have someone telling us what to think or how to identify with what we're seeing. So I'm wondering if that was a conscious decision, you know, or, or in, in the editing of mm -hmm. it all, you know, was that something that you were drawn to do with, to not add in any narration? Yeah, you know, there's a um, uh, famous, well, it's, you know, not too famous, but it's, you know, my favorite, one of my favorite documentaries is called um, Baraka. There's also another sequel called Samsara, which, you know, it's uh, made by a New Mexican uh, filmmaker, and there's no narration at all, or, you know, speaking, and it's uh, such a powerful film of experience and imagery, so I felt, yeah, through, you know, allowing those to really experience it by participating in what they're seeing, um, you know, it could allow them to, to connect deeper with their heart, so it's about tuning down the mind and the logic and the rationalization and, you know, this um, kind of Western idea of thinking, 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 and more of the Southern idea of opening. You know, they say that it, there's um, this connection between the eagle and the condor, and the condor is all about opening your heart, feeling, and the North is about this kind of, you know, the eagle, the precision, the thinking, the rationalization. And so I was kind of bringing this Southern notion you know of the condor in the area of filmmaking by allowing those to just just participate and observe um, and so you know there's a couple other films out there and I'd say Baraka and Samsara are two really good examples of what The Roots Awaken is drawn from you know uh, I don't believe that anything is inherently original and everything comes from something that comes from something and so um, yeah The Roots Awaken is a product of, of those two films that I saw as a filmmaker drawing inspiration from those. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, and um, in the film, Kamiko features 13 different tribes from the Amazon, and you were actually able to go into areas that National Geographic has never even been able to go into, you know? Mm. So can you kind of describe how you were able to connect and how you were able to go into those places and film some of the ceremonies for the first time? Mm. Yeah, good question. So, you know, everyone in that film is my friend. So first I would become their friend and I would, you know, listen. So before assuming and initiating my ideas or, you know, my um, desire to film, I would just listen and listen, you know, go... Uh, participate in, in the things that they do when uh, somebody from the outside comes in, which is often drinking guayusa, which is a type of tea, you know, sitting around often for hours and, and just sitting like, you know, in a living room or somebody's house. And so through that, I was able to gain, you know, their trust. Um, and then I, you know, I shared with them what my mission was, that I had been to this gathering for world peace and that I had this calling to unite uh, people through film and uh, share this message and so I think more than the words I was speaking to these people um, you know they're very in tune emotionally and vibrational wise mm -hmm. that they could pick up on my field of energy and what my intention was and they can see that this was something that was supposed to uh, you know be for others sharing this message to others and and so they welcome me into their ceremonies and I often if not every single time, participated in what I was doing. So some of these ceremonies, you know, drinking ancient plant medicines, um, I would film them and then put the camera down and then actually do the ceremonies. So, uh, you know, they knew that I was willing to do that. 
which is why they allowed me. Um, you know, I wasn't just filming and then assuming what I knew, but I was experiencing it so that I, when I went back to the editing room, I could actually feel out uh, what was happening because I did it. So I wasn't, you know, just sitting in the corner observing, filming, and then leaving, packing up the bag, saying, okay, I know exactly what this is all about. Mm -hmm. It really required this willingness to participate. And so really, you know, I think that's what opened them up to me the mm -hmm. most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah, so, I mean, <clears throat> around the world, and this is a question for both of you, um, there's it seems like there's a similar illness, right? You know, when, when I was watching the documentary, um, just the fact that the big oil companies affect these people's lives so greatly, and then we can see in North Dakota very similar issues, very similar commonalities, you know? So in your both of your opinions, what what is the remedy for, for this illness or these illnesses that we're seeing all over the world? Mm. You yeah, the, uh, the issues are global. Uh, before we didn't know it because we didn't have the technology to see instantly what was happening across the world. It would take weeks to see what was going on. But now with our technology, we can see what's going on everywhere. Everybody has a, a cell phone. And I bring that up because that's how we can start making a difference. Eventually, we will all arrive to a state of balance, unity, and harmony, joy, peace. But before we do that, there's nine billion people in the planet that we can start by raising awareness, and that's mm -hmm. what we're doing. To us, it has always been about you have to find the issue and then work towards the solution, not just point the fingers who's doing wrong. Mm -hmm. We need to start with ourselves. By raising awareness across the globe, that's really the remedy first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with everything uh, that Jose said, and yeah, I think um, it just starts with each individual and, you know, really doing our own human revolution, and, and I think when each person is able to revolutionize themselves, um, that's what's going to change the planet. Um, so oftentimes, like Jose was saying, we can point the finger at other people and, and just go external, but any time that I find something wrong with my environment or another person, mm -hmm. I have to look within because I believe everything is a mirror of myself. So if I'm slandering something or saying something bad about an external thing, I'm also doing that harm to myself. So I have to look within and, and do human revolution. I believe that's uh, what's really going to shift the planet is each person waking up to that fact that they have to look within first and then collectively we will advance mm -hmm. yeah and you know in in the documentary which I encourage everyone to watch because it's incredible um, there were riots going on in a specific part of the film and what's interesting and, and the thought that came to my mind was that you know all over the world we were so diverse you know there's so many different faces colors forms of expression right but the police and the military and and the establishment that keeps that power in place, they all look the same. They all have the same gear. They have the same masks, the same shields. We can find that equipment, you know, wherever people are standing up and speaking for the people. And so, you know, the thoughts that were invoked in my mind from seeing those images, you know, do you, do you, and you, either one of you can answer this one, do you ever believe that that side of things, those people will one day put down those shields and take off their masks and rehumanize themselves? Do you think that that is possible to see in this lifetime? Uh, we stopped believing long ago. We know that this is actually going to happen. Everyone will eventually will be working towers, peace, and harmony, and coexistence. And it's a powerful knowing that we want to share with people that if you believe in something, then you have room for doubt. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we encourage people to know and own the truth that we will be in intergalactic harmony very soon. 
So yes, they mm. will be. Every one of us will be working towards harmony soon. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I mean, because it it was interesting because, you know, I've I've as a journalist I've covered the North Dakota protest and and watched it very closely and you know different languages but saying the same thing to these police officers. Don't you have mothers? Do you have brothers? Do you have aunties? You know, who, who are your family? This is affecting you as well. Your children have to drink this water, you know? And so with that communication, you know, I, I feel like it's so powerful. And if people could just only see, you know, the interconnectedness of all these issues. Yeah, and really what shifted, um, you know, up in North, North Dakota with Standing Rock and uh, the North, you know, the pipeline, what shifted it is when people stopped praying just for the water protectors and they started praying for the police officers mm -hmm. and those mm -hmm. corporate you know CEOs making the decision so it's the same thing uh, you know you can yell and you can uh, shout at these uh, police you know and th that will affect them but more powerful is to pray for mm -hmm. them so mm -hmm. I think when protesters show up and you know when I was um, at this protest that you're speaking of in the film I actually spoke a poem mm. to some of these police officers and they were smiling and it, they loved it. Mm. So I think, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's that gentleness and it's that mm. female energy mm. that it was really quite powerful. And I think especially when it's a male dominated police force, when a lot of women, um, you know, send that love and that compassion and say it how it is, and communicate it. Uh, I don't think they could not feel it, especially mm. when the message comes from women. Mm. Um, you know, oftentimes if it's angry and aggressive, they will just resist. And mm. but it's it's that compassion that ultimately will allow them to feel because you know, for them it's oftentimes uh, just a matter about getting paid and, and mm. providing for their families. And I don't want to, you know, I, some of these people they have to do it they, because they have to feed you know, they're five, six kids, and so they, they get it. They understand that they don't want to, you know, be fighting against the people, but they, mm. they need to meet their needs, too. So uh, I think we need to be compassionate about that, too. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, and something, a, a beautiful highlight that I want to share with you all um, in the film <clears throat> is, is the music that was throughout. Um, it was just so, so powerful, um, and you know, there's this the the drum that I feel was this underlining sound throughout. It was an element, you know, mm -hmm. to the entire film, and you know that that sound and that music and that that expression is just such a powerful thing. And um, how how was that? Just experiencing all those different ceremonies because you you there were so many different. Mm -hmm ceremonies that were going on in the film mm -hmm. so I mean what what was that like for you yeah one of the original intentions of this was to use all music from the people themselves so each community all of the music um, that you hear is actually produced from them themselves except you know some of the transitions there's some um, you, know, you know there's one guy by the name of Nicola Cruz who mixes ancestral ceremony songs with electronic music. Mm. So there are some other youth who have mixed in these new forms of like hip hop, electronic. Mm. So I put those in the transitions and there is one song um, that is actually um, you know, a Lakota song during the protest that I wanted to use to bridge North and South. Besides that, it's all from the people themselves of South America from mm. Ecuador. Um, but yeah, in all of these, um, you know, indigenous cultures, the drum is the essence. And so you feel that, like you said, mm -hmm. that heartbeat, you know, mm -hmm. throughout um, the whole film. So I think that, you know, I'm happy you, you felt that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really quite, you know, humbled that you observed that mm -hmm. because I think that was mm -hmm. one of the main intentions is for people to feel the music through the heartbeat, through the drum. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, because I'm like... This is so interesting, you know, because if, you, if, if you're at the doctor or whatever, you can, like, hear that sound, you know? And, and, and I'm like, these, these people don't have these little, like, stethoscope things. They're not just, like, listening to the heart. But somehow, like, through the drum, it just brings out that human essence of the heart space so clearly. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, so, and this is a question for both of you that I want to ask. Um, 
what do you think, um, what's the power behind indigenous voices and the music and the rhythm? You know, what it, what's it, because I feel personally that it's just medicine to the earth, you know, but Mm -hmm. in your own words, you know, how, what, where's the power and the essence in that? Mm. Yeah, so, mm, it's something, yeah, we can't explain, you know, verbally, but when we hear the music, we feel, and um, it's quite related to the title, The Roots Awaken, we all are indigenous to this planet Earth, and so we all have these memories embedded in us, some of us have them more hidden than others, and some of us, you know, we need to polish our mirrors and see that it is ourselves, too, so... Um, I think we're just, you know, dusting away some of these, you know, forces on us that that want to prevent us from remembering. Mm. But we all have these memories mm. embedded in mm. us of the drum and indigenous music. Even those who, you know, would totally um, not want to say I'm indigenous, they they feel it. And I've actually had, you know, somebody say um, during a Q and A session after the film. This is so strange. I feel like I've already heard all of this music mm-hmm. before, and I don't know from where. Mm-hmm. So that was, pr- you know, actual proof mm-hmm. that it is mm-hmm. awakening mm-hmm. the people's mm-hmm. roots. So. so, the indigenous, as we call us, um, we understand that when we are born in Mothership Earth, we're actually all indigenous to this planet, mm-hmm. and. To me, at least in the Maya Shoti tribes, that's the essence of what we do. We recognize each other as one. In fact, uh, the roots, Maya roots, we're all one. The Maya word means people. But the essence of that, that summarizing of all the teachings that we carry, when we accept the fact that we're all indigenous to the same planet, then we do, our brothers and sisters of those tribes in Ecuador, they do everything as effortlessly as natural. And the key element is they do it without expecting anything. Mm-hmm. So releasing all expectations from all directions, then everything that comes already is. Mm-hmm. So in reality, they're already stepping into the better view of the entire galaxies and the sharing with us with unconditional love, without expectations, and that's what the Roots Awaken through our sister was able to capture that emotion. Mm. And if we can share that with everyone, mm. and that's, we'll start remembering our roots and that we need to love each other without expecting anything in return. Mm. And I feel that that's, uh, at least from my perspective, and growing up in those, uh, mm teachings, I feel that that's what we all need to do. Love unconditionally with our expectations. Mm. Absolutely. You know, and and right now, I mean, I can only speak from my own personal experience, but what I see in America specifically is so much disconnect. You know, there's there's such a huge um, influence of this individuality, you know, and, and these things that our differences and what separates us rather than what connects us, you know? And, and I feel like just as here and how we, we've been conditioned to see that separateness and feel that disconnect, there was also that going on in Ecuador. And, you know, one thing that you were saying in the beginning of the film is that, you know, these different tribes don't understand how connected they really are. So could you share a little bit about that, you know, mm-hmm. and, and how um, in your mind, you know, what your intentions for reconnecting those tribes? Because I thought that was very, mm-hmm. very beautiful, your intentions in that. Mm, yeah, thank you. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, there's this technique which is called divide and conquer, which uh, has been used all across the planet where by dividing people, uh, it's easier to conquer. So, you know, um, the oil companies and the logging companies, uh, you know, their mission right now is to extract from the Amazon and from the Andes and from the land in Ecuador. So, you know, they go in and they try and divide the different communities against each other. 
you know, by giving one community free airplane tickets out of the Amazon and another one not, and then telling them that they're doing that and mixing up the story and brewing the pot so that mm. <laughs> everyone just, you know, starts, you know, um, getting angry at each other. And so, uh, you know, this has happened, and I saw this in Ecuador. And so, you know, a lot of these communities, they will talk about the other one in a, you know, a bad way. Mm. And so when I saw that, I said, you know, these guys are so deeply interconnected. If only they could see that and just for a moment remember mm -hmm. that they're one. And so that was the intention behind the film to, um, you know, show these different stories and then go back after the film was done and show them the film, you know, show each community and have them come together and even have one gathering where they're all present and then they can dialogue and talk about this so we can really bridge um, these different places. And, um, you know, the essence behind that is that culture is life. Mm -hmm. And so the whole film, The Roots Awaken, is really stressing this idea that music, ceremony, song, mm -hmm. dance, tradition, these, these are what make us human beings and what unite us in community. Mm -hmm. And so it's a huge aspect of community culture. Um, and so that, that was yeah, the intention to go back, which you know, I will do, mm. and um, show them, and, and they'll see it, you know, it's, it's really clear throughout the film, you know, it's really woven in there that, mm. that that's um, what connects them as culture. Absolutely, you know, and it's interesting because in the film, there, there's never really a highlight, like, okay, this is this tribe right here, you know, and oh, this is this tribe over here, it all just really has this flow to it, you know, mm. and it's almost like, you just feel like you're looking at the same picture, you know, but it's different people, different forms of expression, but it's just mm -hmm. like that interconnectedness is really, really highlighted, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I, I, when it comes to here in America, it's like how, you know, I was having these thoughts before I even saw these films. How can we connect the North to the South? right? The, the east to the west, because it, it is all the four directions, right? We're all a part of those four directions. And so anyone out there got bright ideas, you know, <laughs> start working. We got work to do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, wow. And you know, could, uh, let's see, I have a few more questions. Um, and I, I do want to highlight a little bit about the, the distractions, you know, and a little, I want to go a little deeper into how these corporations or these companies really separate people. And you said that alcohol was another aspect of how they kind of would distract mm -hmm. or bring that energy down a little bit. So yeah. share what you saw, please. Yeah. So, um, you know, they have this. Uh, traditional beverage called chicha which is a fermented corn or yuca beverage which they've been drinking for thousands of years which they drink every day and it's you know part of their healthy diet um, but and it has alcohol you know percentage of alcohol but um, they're not used to drinking beer or hard alcohol and so one of the things that the oil company has done to some of these uncontacted communities is arrive with alcohol as a gift quote unquote mm -hmm. so one of the things that moved me that I saw was down you know this big river in the Amazon a steamboat which was not meant to be on that river you know that's only been traveled by canoe it's not meant to have a huge steamboat going mm -hmm. through it but what I saw it, is there must have been over 10,000 crates of beer on that boat and they dropped these thousands and thousands of crates of beer into these communities that have never drinking beer before mm -hmm. and so they they drink it and to them it's like this great gift and they mm -hmm. party and they celebrate the way that they would traditionally with their song and their dance but now they're getting this uh you know a new addiction it almost gets it gets them drunker quicker it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit stronger than their traditional beverages and so then when they give them, they come back and they give them their free airplane ticket to get out of the Amazon, they arrive and they see money for the first time and they see a lot of things in the city for the first time. You know, they remember the beer and they see that in the city and they, they seek a way to find the money to buy it again because they remember that, you know, that was mm -hmm. an experience they had. So it's quite sad um, and this has happened throughout North America to 
the native people here and mm. so I actually have an idea of making a short video uh, shortly which is going to sh reveal how this happened in North America mm. and you can mm -hmm. see the effects a hundred years ago and you can mm. see the photos and you can see what's going on now and then show that to the people in South America mm. so they can go and travel through time because mm. film is a means of time traveling they'll see oh hey look this already happened to our native brothers and sisters up north mm. it's quite obvious that these crates of alcohol being dropped off is similar and I think people in the Amazons if they saw it they would recognize these are our brothers and sisters and they could see it and fast forward um, quicker so they can e maybe mm. even prevent some mm. of these solutions mm. so I think that's one uh, solution that came to me was mm. was showing them what has happened here so it's a good point and I think it's something that needs to be discussed so people are aware of it absolutely and you know for for the the native people here I, I give so much respect for you know the 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 preservation that's been able to happen with their culture um, you know, and, and their traditions and their, their deep spiritual insights, you know, even though going through the most. And um, that, that was also a, a key feature in the film of these, these communities awakening to the fact that some of those traditions are being lost, you know, and the importance of continuing the practice. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, if any of you want, if, you know, Jose, or, do you, if you want to share, you know, the, the importance of preserving these these cultural practices um, in such a fast-paced, consumeristic reality that we're in. Mm. Yeah. We, uh, this, the things that we do, both of us and a few million other people around the world, we all walk in towards that. Uh, again, without expecting anything, we, you know, go to countries, go to cities, and we bring these teachings to the youth and reawaken those who are already um, wise men and women to share what they know, what they used to do with others. And that's one of the things that coming into Fresno or in any other city, we seek out elders mm -hmm. to let them know. Some of these elders, local elders, have never seen anything as powerful as the Roots Awaken, even though they are power, so powerful themselves. Mm -hmm. So by bringing these messages, it's like a reset button that mm -hmm. we push in a lot of people, mainly elders and youth, and then everyone in between can tap into it. So together, the whole point of everything that we do, the Roots Awaken, Six Sun Kana, and Many other people who are working towards uniting the people is exactly that. We're not dividing and conquering. We're mm -hmm. asking to remember that we're all one in unity. And the more of us that seek the way and think the way and know the way is how fast we're going to accelerate that harmony that's already in the future around the corner. We'll bring it to the present now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Jose, you mentioned the, the <coughs> six sun calendar. Can you describe that a little bit in your own practice? Uh, yes, the six encounter is an invitation to see ourselves and everybody else in three timelines at the same time, in the past, the present, and the future. So what we do, and we practice through um, techniques that we share as ancient technologies that our ancestors have kept we go into the past and we bring everything with us to the present, all our memories, and we hold it. And then we go into the future and we bring those memories from the future and hold it all together in the same time. So in essence, we see, we don't see linear time, we see cyclical time mm -hmm. in front of us. Mm -hmm. So past, present, and future at the same time. And by using our own experience from the past and the future, then we can make the best decisions in every step we take. Mm. So that's the essence. It's an invitation to remember that we can go to the past and the future and bring the absolute best to the eternal present. Mm. It's amazing. It's powerful stuff. Um, so, you know, your, your hopes, Kamiko, is to go back to these 13 tribes. 
Um, do you do you have a specific date in the future that you're bringing to the present? Yeah, that's a good question, and I, I did. And then I let go, and I just trusted the divine time that we're all part of. And so I've just been meditating to align myself with the divine time mm -hmm. that it will come. But <clears throat> it'll be, um, you know, before um, March 30th, 100% mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. then. So it's coming up very shortly. And, um, yeah, I will, you know, first show it in each community. And then <clears throat> when I arrive to the community, I'm going to invite them to a gathering that's going to happen in Quito, in the capital, mm -hmm. so that after I do my round to all the 12 communities, they will um, receive an invitation um, that will be to come to the capital, and then uh, we will do a, uh, an event and a ceremony, and they will all get to see each other in person mm -hmm. and in the film, and my hope is that that will instigate dialogue between them so that wherever I go, when I leave Ecuador, when I travel, when I continue my work, they can continue to build upon their relations. So each person in the film, they're a leader, you know, and, mm -hmm. and when they see each other, they're gonna know it and they will remember the memories they have of the future of them working together. And so, uh, you know, they're gonna be there their whole lives as key members of their community. So mm -hmm. they'll be able to meet and say, okay, you're from there, I'm from here. We have the same mission, let's unite. And so I visualize that gathering being this um, rebirth of the gathering that initiated the film, which was, as you saw, this gathering for world peace that originally opened up the idea for The Roots Awakens. So it's just spiraling and replanting seeds. So, you know, the more we give, the more we get back. So I feel like this film is a constant cycle of giving and receiving. It's almost like a lotus flower that keeps expanding and expanding. So uh, the idea is to plant these seeds through... Um, this cycle that um, is going to be revisited so that's um, yeah that's the plan beautiful beautiful and Jose do you do you have any plans for the future that you'd like to share uh, yes we <laughs> actually do uh, it's not my plan is uh, we're just the vessel so what we do Absolutely. so in Jan uh, November 18th of 2018 mm -hmm. we're going to unite to start 50,000 uh, brothers and sisters, and we're going to pray for peace, among other things. Uh, maybe you can expand on that. Yeah, so it's um, <clears throat> it's a gathering that will be held, like he said, on November 18th, 2018, to bring together mm -hmm. actually 50,000 youth. Everybody's welcome, all mm -hmm. ages, but it's particularly the youth, the ones that are going to be taking the baton for the future. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is something that was uh, planted by a man named <clears throat> Daisaku Akeda, mm -hmm. who is a peace act activist, Buddhist philosopher, educator. And so he's my personal mentor mm -hmm. in life. And, and so he, you know, he had this vision that um, all tribes, all people are going to come together and pray for peace. Mm -hmm. So we invite everybody that's viewing this to come be a part of this. Uh, in November 28th, mm -hmm. or sorry, November 18th, uh, 2018. Mm. So beautiful. <clears throat> yeah, and um, I would like to thank everyone for joining us. And um, from my heart, I'd like to thank both of you, truly, for mm. sharing and for the work that you do. And I mean, the, just being in their presence, it's it's medicine to the heart, <laughs> to the spirit, you know? So thank mm. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>